I will discuss further circuit repair tips of the Fujitsu, or O General Mini Split Air Conditioner. I was explaining about the chopper circuit. The chopper directly generates voltages without using a voltage regulator. But before going further, let me clarify that if the PCB isn't functioning at all, apart from the fuse, the smoothing capacitor could be faulty. If it gets short-circuited, open, or becomes weak, it can cause this issue. Additionally, the filtering capacitor might also be the problem if it becomes open or short circuits. The next component to check is the diode, specifically the 407 number diode. If this diode becomes open for any reason, it will cause a short circuit in the system and the switching IC won't allow it to operate, so no voltage will be produced and the system won't work. If the switching IC itself gets short-circuited, the system will also stop functioning. The number of this IC is TNY274PN. If this IC fails, the system will not work at all. So first, you need to check the high side. If the high side is fine, but the voltages aren't allowing the system to turn on, then you should replace the switching IC and check the diode as well. Apart from this, if the chopper itself gets faulty, the circuit won't work. One of my friends asked how we can tell if the chopper is bad, so I will make a separate video explaining in detail how to diagnose when the chopper is faulty. Now let's talk about the low voltage side. If you've checked the high voltage side and the chopper is fine, but the circuit still isn't working, the problem could be on the low voltage side. On this side, we should get two types of voltages, 15 volts and 5 volts. These voltages are directly supplied. To check where they're supplied, look at capacitor number 10. Check both its positive and negative terminals for voltage. You should get 15 volts. If you do, then that's good and the system should work. Next, check diode 3. If it's short-circuited for any reason, the system will not function because the required 425 volts won't be generated. As a result, the blower motor of the unit won't operate. Additionally, 15 volts is converted to 12 volts for certain functions, and if this conversion isn't happening, those 12 volt functions will be disabled causing the unit to start displaying errors. Now let's talk about the 5 volt supply. The 5 volts is associated with another capacitor, capacitor number 9. If you check the back side, you'll see capacitor number 9. On both its positive and negative terminals, there should be 5 volts. If, for any reason, the 5 volts isn't present, this capacitor could be shorted. Also check diode number 4 next to it. If this diode is short-circuited for any reason, the voltage won't appear there either. So, both the capacitor and the diode need to be checked. Additionally, there's an inductor labeled L2 in this section. You need to check for 5 volts at this point as well. Use the capacitor as the ground reference and then check for voltage on L2. If 5 volts isn't present, L2 could be faulty as it's a small inductor. If it becomes open for any reason, it will not allow the 5 volts to pass through. I forgot to mention one important thing about the high side. There is a reference IC, TL431, installed here. If this IC becomes faulty or short circuits, the switching IC won't work either, so it's necessary to check or replace this IC, as it is directly grounded. If there are voltage spikes or surge voltages, there's a high chance that this IC can get damaged. It's better to check it and, if possible, replace it to ensure the system can be turned on properly. Now, let's talk about the communication system. This IC here is the communication IC. Look at pin number 1. There should be 5 volts on this pin. If 5 volts is not present here, it means the communication system will not turn on. Now check pins 2 and 3. These receive high voltages, so it's necessary to check the voltages here as well. Also, you will notice a 1 kilo ohm resistor. Its number is 102 connected here. If for any reason, this resistor gets burned due to the high voltages involved, the communication system will stop working. So it's important to check this resistor too if the communication system isn't functioning properly. Now let's talk about the DC fan motor. The DC fan motor has a 6-pin connector, but the 5th pin is usually absent, while the rest of the pins are present. The 6th and 4th pins should have 320 to 340 volts. The 3rd pin should have 15 volts, and the 4th pin is grounded. The 2nd pin is for feedback, and the 1st pin receives reference voltages, which are used to turn on the motor. These reference voltages are variable. When the motor speed needs to increase, higher voltages are supplied, around 6 to 7 volts, and when the speed needs to decrease, the voltage is reduced. This is how the system operates. Now an important point, often when the unit is turned on and the breaker trips suddenly, whether it's for the outdoor unit or the indoor unit, it's usually because the rectifier has short-circuited. This issue often happens due to a fault in the rectification system. 
So if this happens, you can be sure the rectification system is faulty. I will explain the next part of the system in my next video. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos and subscribe. Thank you.